Alright guys, so at the moment, as I don't know if you'll be able to tell in my voice, I'm very ill, I'm very sick at the moment, and it's not actually helping me, uh, it's actually one of the reasons why my videos have been off over the past couple of days, past couple of weeks I've missed out one or two, and it's not because I've not been making content, it's because I'm not actually able to make the content because I'm very ill. Also I've been to see a family on the opposite side of England, so you know, I've been, I've been visiting friends and family there, so it's not that I'm trying not to make content, or not trying to make content, but it's just because there have been other things but mainly funnily enough those things don't matter as much as what I'm about to talk about today as you can probably tell from the title now just to warn you there are gonna be some like weird probably very unnatural jump cuts and that is just due to the fact that I'm sniffling so much I'm so ill at the moment but I do want to get this video out because I want to carry on with my process of making videos now that I'm back where I live I've been here like two days now so I'm actually able to make more content again so today I'm gonna to be talking about why Windows 10 is possibly the worst piece of software I've ever used in my entire life and yes it is software it, it all counts under software and I, I'm not talking about Windows Mobile because in my opinion that thing shouldn't exist it's just not not because it's bad or any way because I think it is bad but I think just because you need Android and iOS I don't think you need any more than that and the main reason I actually don't like Windows 10 it's not like it's really buggy and I just don't I don't like it at all it's because Windows have already made a couple of good operating systems. Windows 7 was arguably one of the best they've ever made. Windows 8.1, I am actually fall I actually fall into the group that actually liked Windows 8.1. Yes, I hated the start menu and the modern UI, whatever, whatever they called it in the end, I, I didn't like that. But the base system, as long as you installed a couple of mods to make the start menu normal again and the file system normal again, it, it worked and it was really good. It was very stable compared to Windows 10. And before some of you uh, users go into the comments and say, oh, I've never had a problem with Windows 10, it's amazing. I know my friend Ewan has done the same thing, it's absolutely fine for him, but I can't seem to get Windows 10 to work and neither can my friend Harry. And there are a bunch of others, uh, and it's not just because we're power users, some of the things we do, are, and some things I'll list off in a minute, it will kind of explain to you that it's not just about being a power user and it's not just about being someone who just checks Facebook now and then, this can happen to anyone. So the first thing I, I want to get into is the start menu. Uh, now you might have thought the Windows 8.1 and Windows 8 start menus were bad because they, they brought up this modern UI that covered the whole screen and it was so unintuitive, you know, it wasn't good, but it worked. Uh, once you actually got used to it. It worked a lot better for touch screens, of course, but either way, it worked. The start menu in Windows 10, quite renowned for not working at all. Uh, it, first up, there are several different ways it doesn't work. One is it lags. You'll press it, five seconds later it might pop up, and this could be on any system. This is a Ryzen 7 1700 with a GTX 1080, and this side is an i7 7700K with a 7950. So these are not slow systems. Uh, in fact, the one with the hard drive is quite a bit quicker than the one with the SSD, just mainly because it's such a fresh install of Windows. But, you know, this could be SSDs or hard drives. Of course, older hard drives, you know, I, I, I can't even talk about older hard drives. I just think they're useless. I think you should be on SSD. The reason I can't uh, actually get an SSD on this system is because I can't afford it because I'm poor. Either way, there's lag. Five second lag, maybe, from when you press the start button, whether it's on the keyboard or with the mouse, uh, than when it comes up. And sometimes it just won't come up at all. Second is it actually coming up at all. Uh, maybe half the start menu comes up, maybe Maybe the whole thing comes up, maybe none of it comes up. Now me and my friend Harry have had some real issues with this and this is very awkward when you're a content creator and you know, you try and create content and you can't because somehow and somehow because your your installation of Premiere Pro has just disappeared after being on your computer for six months. And I'm not joking, I'm, I'm not joking, okay, Premiere Pro didn't have that problem for a little while and then it did. The main two that, that started the whole thing that were really bad is Spotify, just absolutely obliterated from my computer, don't know where it went, go on the programs to uninstall, still there, apparently Windows says it's still there, go to search it, not a thing, go into the, the Windows search, go into File Explorer and search it, nah, I don't know mate, don't exist, we've got an updater here, but we haven't got the actual program, okay, well I can reinstall Spotify, that's fine, oh wait, I can't, because it can't uninstall if it can't find the file to uninstall, oh that's great, and then I, I managed to use the web player for a while. I thought, you know, Spotify don't need to download. The client can use the web player. That's fine. I don't have premium, so I don't have to keep anything locally. Then it started to happen with OBS, which I wanted to start streaming again, but I got put off because every time I installed OBS, it just straight up uninstalled itself. Uh, that Well, I say every time. It happened twice. But it, it was, you know, annoying, and it kind of put me off streaming. I, I don't stream at the moment because I don't know what's going to happen. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story in a second of what happened with my second PC, the actual editing PC. Then it started to happen with, well, it, it did happen with Firefox, which is important because I use Firefox. I like Firefox because the RAM usage. 
Talking of RAM usage, the RAM usage in Windows 10 is not only ridiculous, but also kind of unstable itself, because I have, there was a system over there that I used this, this system over here to kind of like test PCs and stuff, as well as, uh, as my editing system. I had uh, Katie's PC, which I made. She had four gigs of RAM in there. I know that's not a lot of RAM. It was just all we could afford at the time, so, you know, it's fine. And she plays on like Minecraft and CSGO. It works perfectly fine for that. However, it, it uses 50%, and I was expecting that, maybe 75% just on idle, because Windows 10 is an absolute RAM whore. And that's fine, you know, it uses all of the RAM, whatever. That's, that's you know, really not very efficient in this day and age, but whatever, that's fine. It happened on my 8 gig. My gaming system has 8 gigs of RAM. 50%. Well, that's weird. You, 16, my 16 gigs of RAM in my editing PC, 50%. Now, I don't know, because about, it, it wasn't exactly 50, you know, it went down incrementally, but it was anywhere between 45 and 50% for the whole thing, for the, all of the systems. And I haven't tested it on 32 gigs, but I can assume that 32 gigs would be fine, because it's just an ex exceptional amount of RAM, 64, 128, 256, whatever. But... For some reason, I just had that issue, and this was a fresh install of Windows, you know, I wasn't installing, you know, Spotify has a, a, a background task as well as like updaters for games clients and stuff, nope, didn't have anything installed, this was a fresh install, it really weirded me out, because of course once I installed stuff and once it kind of went in and, and, and had those background tasks, it didn't just add up, it kind of settled down a bit, which was fine, but it's just weird how that acts up, and again, Windows 10 isn't just a bad OS. It's just unstable, you don't know what's going to happen. Now, crashing can happen a lot in any application, and it's happened, for, especially in Windows Vista, that was the worst for that. But this happens again in, in Windows 10. A lot of my programs will crash, and not like outdated programs. You know, I keep my stuff up to date because Windows 10 is the most up to date, so I, I kind of try and balance it. And it just, not a thing, just like most of the time there'll be crashes. I'll like, experience at least one crash a week. That might not sound like a lot to people, but you've got to remember that Windows 10 is almost a 100 pound operating system and uh, Mac OS is free and I didn't get any crashes doing the same thing. With games it can be a bit different. I, d I tend not to include games in these kinds of things, Not which I should, I definitely should. To make it fair I should include games, uh, but I know that some people go, oh you play games so clearly it's going to affect performance. It shouldn't really, should it? But there are those people. What creates the crashing a lot of the time for me is the reminders and stuff down the bottom right. The desktop notifications, I believe they're calling them. And it's these notifications that come down the bottom right, just next to your view desktop button and time and date. And it, they're really frustrating. They just pop up. And it can be for anything. I, I turn them off in my browser so that I don't, you know, I don't have any browser things that do that. However, Windows does like to tell me about all of its amazing features and how I can learn a lot about Windows 10. And I, I don't like it. I don't I don't care. I, I tried to turn everything off, but there's just such a deep interface. And why is why is the control panel different? Why don't they just leave it the same that they've had it for years? It was perfectly fine and it worked. So yeah, it's just frustrating to use Windows 10. And I wanted to make this video, one, because I needed a little bit of a filler whilst I attempt to repair my system, and I'll get into that in a little second. And secondly, because I really wanted to talk about it. You know, this channel is about phones, but of course, one of the main things and how I produce these videos is I use a Windows PC. When I was using Mac, it was difficult. I was using Final Cut Pro, that worked fine. However, I wanted to use Premiere Pro and uh, Mac Mini with 2.5 gigahertz dual core processor and like eight gigs of RAM and no DGPU was gonna be difficult. Uh, but of course, that's why it changed to Windows 10. But I would go back to Windows 7, but you know, this is the thing, Windows 10 is a brand new OS, and Windows have had OS's that have worked in the past. Windows 8 was fine, Windows 8.1 was even better, of course, it wasn't intuitive, but I don't care about that at this point, all I want is my OS to work, and then we can worry about intuitivity. And then of course there was Windows 7, which arguably shouldn't really have been unsupported, or when it does get unsupported it shouldn't, because it's just such a widely spread, like, well-renowned OS operating system. And then, of course, we've got, like I said, Mac OS, which is perfectly stable for me most of the time. And I'm not a, I'm not a Mac fanboy. I'm not a Windows fanboy. I don't like Linux because it doesn't have the tools that I need to, for creativity. And secondly, I just don't think that's intuitive enough for me. I, you know, I'm not a hipster. I don't, oh, yeah, well, I like Linux because it's open source and cool. And that's great. If you're one of those people, power to you. But that's just not me. I, I make YouTube videos. And one little tidbit before we go. 
Last night, I turned my computer, I always turn my computer off the right way. I never shut it down by just pressing the power button on the back, or sorry, the power switch on the back, and I never shut it down by unplugging it. Most of the time, I'll press the power button on the front, you just, you know, tap it, and it will literally act as if you've pressed start and shut down. But last night, I thought, you know, it'd be a bit different, and I'll just click shut down, and I shut it down the normal way. So I clicked, I closed all my programs first, went to start, click shut down perfectly fine thought you know that's great woke up this morning went to go and use my computer the whole installation of windows has crashed it didn't work it just gets to the screen where it comes up with the windows logo and the little spirally thing gets about i believe it's i worked out i timed it, it was like 0 point maybe it's just under half a second and then it crashes and it gets stuck there it could leave it for an hour doesn't do anything press buttons doesn't do anything so I've had, and that's on an SSD, so that's not like it being slow or anything, and I've had all the drivers installed, and that's a really fresh OS of Windows, it's only been on there for a few days, maybe a week, and so I've had to use my gaming system to basically do everything, and that has a hard drive, no SSD, just pure hard drive, and that thing works. So that's why I wanted to make this video, because it'll probably take me a couple of hours to actually install Windows again, just to be able to install Premiere Pro, just so I can edit this video and upload it to YouTube. So if this video gets out at about 7 o'clock in the evening, maybe 10 o'clock in the evening, you guys know why, and I apologise for that in advance, because that is going to be a huge problem, and for me, it's just a horrible experience overall. You know, I don't pirate my operating systems, I, I spend the full amount. That's mainly why I'm poor, because I have to buy the OS's and I have just recently got a second system. It is frustrating that you pay this amount of money and your OS doesn't work. You know, when I was using Mac, I paid £10 years and years ago for Lion when it was on sale on the Mac App Store and when I was on Snow Leopard. And I've never paid a penny since for my operating system on Mac, and it worked like a dream. The only one that was just a little bit annoying was, I believe, Mountain Lion. That had a few issues for me. But again, that was free. I, I didn't really worry about a free operating system. For one that is, and I, I get Windows 10 Pro, so it's like the expensive one. And I buy it usually from Microsoft. Otherwise, I'll buy it from, I believe, CD Keys or one of those key websites. You know, I still buy it. And it does this. So guys, it has been your boy Ryan Thomas. Thank you for listening. Uh, I haven't got B-roll in this video because it was a rant. And I really apologise for those of you expecting a phone video. I've actually got, not sure if I've got it on me, uh, a Galaxy S6 flat. I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on that. I've also got the iPhone 6 I'll be or 6S. I'll be doing a couple of videos on that. And one thing that I do have to the side of me in preparation for this is a care package. A care package from Betron here which is a pair of headphones and a Bluetooth speaker. And because they're like 20 pounds, I thought I'd do a video on affordable audio products for your phones, because one of them's Bluetooth, the other one uses a jack. And I thought that would be a really cool video to do because you know you can spend loads of money on Bose and Sony stuff, but you know can you get some quality stuff from Amazon for like 20 quid? So I got a care package from Betron and I will be talking about that fairly soon. But for right now, I'm gonna leave this video here please pray for me if I can actually get this onto my computer and then edit it. Uh, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support recently. I've actually had quite an influx of subscribers recently. I believe it's from the S7 Edge Pink Line video that I did. Uh, honestly, you guys mean a lot to me and you're some of the reason why I'm still here. Why I'm still here making videos and why I'm still and trying to achieve my next best thing because you guys inspire me. So yeah. Please do like this video if you like it or dislike it. Don't have to do that at all. Or comment or subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas for Fail Tech and I appreciate you guys more than anything. I would just like to personally thank Eric and Ross Baldwin. You, I can't remember Eric's last name. I've just got it up on my emails now. You guys are amazing for pledging on Patreon. It really does support me a lot. Some people might think that like $20 or $10 or whatever it is at the moment isn't a lot. But to me anything like that support you know even clicking that subscribe button even clicking that like button or even putting in a comment of your thought it might be a negative or a positive either way they really support me and i can't thank you guys enough for that it's getting a bit getting a bit soppy at the end of the video but you know i'm ill so it can happen anyway guys i will see you in the next video i've been ryan thomas for Fairtech. peace